the speaker is not well known to many of you, so it will require a lengthy introduction. <laughs> Our speaker today is Judge David Johnston. Uh, David was a uh, graduate of Ohio County High School in 1969. He has a uh, associate degree in executive management from Owensboro Junior College. He was in the U.S. Army from 1971 through 1973. And he was the first park director of Ohio County. Did you find your way out here okay today, Judge? <laughs> he was hired in 1982 for three years, but left 26 years and one month later. And he was elected judge executive in 2010. I'd like to welcome Judge David Johnson. Thank you. We're going to, uh, I won't be as long this year as I was last. Last year I tried to give you all of our accomplishments in the year, and that list is just too long, so I'm just going to hit on a few of them and uh, talk more about the, uh, uh, the, the state of the county in, in the bigger picture. Uh, overall, things here are good in Ohio County, and barring a disaster, the future looks good. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was, I hope you all know this, but I want to make sure that you do, that the relationship of elected officials here, I believe is better than they've ever been. The sheriff and uh, Jason, uh, Bess, all of the countywide officials, and uh, as well as the mayors of Beaver Dam and Hartford and I, uh, we get along really well, and uh, even though we may be align different politically, parties-wise, and we may not have the same priorities for the county, but we all working together to move the county forward, and, uh, it's, and I'm going to do everything I can to see that it stays that way. Uh, the building you're in, the Senior Center, uh, houses all of our senior programs. The uh, Meals on Wheels program is a big demand, and that's ran from here. Um, and we make sure that everything's needed to run this facility is here to do it with. Uh, roads is the thing we get the most calls about, but believe it or not, they're getting fewer because we're making progress. We purchased a lot of new equipment, and we've uh, uh, improved our uh, techniques. Uh, and please uh, notice as you're going around all the things that cost a lot of money. The road equipment is one of them. And we paved 38.62 miles of roads in, in 2012. We installed thousands of feet of guardrail. And uh, overall, we improved the road conditions. But the greatest accomplishment in that department was uh, within days of taking office, I was presented a list of 74 bridges that need to be replaced or significant repair done on those bridges. We now have that down to 16. After a lot of work and a lot of money spent, that's where we've got it down to. Uh, the community center now has a uh, new clean and welcome environment thanks to the new crew and the many new improvements made both outside and inside. If you haven't visited the community center, uh, look at it when you're there. Here at the park, We've uh, went over the buildings and painted them, renovated them, make them look a lot better, and completely renovated the shower house down over the hill. We opened a new spray park this year, which uh, many, many people enjoy. Uh, we built a new firing range up on the hill, which makes three ranges up there now. We uh, added 72 acres to the park, which brings the total acreage here to over 600 and the park system as a whole, over 900. We have a brand new animal shelter, one that ever uh, community around us would be envious of. And uh, thanks to our new animal control ordinance that we passed last year, uh, after trying for, uh, actually in 2011, we passed that after 30 years of it being in the works. It was finally done, and it's paying off. The intake and the number of complaints is down significantly. And thanks to our volunteers at the shelter, the adoptions are up and the euthanasia rate is, is down. So that's all a good thing in animal control. 
Um, and, and these are the numbers that shelters used to measure themselves by. The Jerusalem Ridge issue has been the most challenging and frustrating at times uh, objective of this, mis this administration. I do remain optimistic that the industry has a great future in Ohio County. I believe that there will be many related events each year that will promote tourism greatly and involve more local people in this uh, uh, industry. We have, I think most of you know, a career center in the, at the county, at the community center, that's totally funded by the fiscal court. We have a staff of one full-time and two part-time, and we take care of our employers in the county who are looking for workers, and we took care, take care of people that are seeking a, a job. Uh, I'm gonna make a bold statement that anyone that wants to go to work in Ohio County today at an entry level job can do so even if they have a felony on the record or even if they have a disability they can go to work today in Ohio County that's how good the job market is here and of course our uh, unemployment rate is is a very low way below national state average and uh, on any given day it fluctuates we're the very lowest at times in the state uh, Coal. Even though the president and the EPA has basically waged a war on coal, our minds are doing well here. Uh, we receive, the county government does about $2 million in coal severance tax plus $400,000 in their occupational taxes. So that's a big thing for, for Ohio County Coal is. All the pretty things you see around and extra things that we've been able to do that's why we've been able to do it, because of the coal. Manufacturing is strong here as well. Uh, our uh, factories are hiring, and, uh, and, and uh, new people are looking to build factories here. So it's uh, looking good. Uh, our water lines in the county, which a few years ago looked like it'd be impossible to get uh, water to all of Ohio County, uh, County water, there's only 5% of the residents in Ohio County that want water that doesn't have it. And that's came a long, long way in the last few years. Uh, we've made a uh, strong commitment to see that our firefighters have everything they need to protect us from fires, and they're the front line in any disaster as well, our firefighters are. Uh, We've upgraded uh, their equipment, trucks, and a new fire uh, station. And we've also put in uh, 15 new fire hydrants this past year, which uh, brings many people's insurance rates down. Uh, some places from 30 to 50% on your house insurance because you had fire hydrant. Uh, our 911 system has new... Uh, radio systems, digital, which is ahead of uh, most of our neighboring communities. Uh, we have a new generator, so in case of emergency, the power doesn't go down on our 911. And there's a better work environment. This helps uh, them in the 911 office to provide uh, a better service for you. And uh, our sheriff is to thank for what he's done there too. Uh, and since he's taken over the management of it, uh, it's, it's just a, a tight shift there and everybody's happy and they're doing a great job for us. We've purchased new equipment for emergency management as well, which prepares us for any uh, unforeseen disaster. We in Ohio County, this is something I take pride in, and it's brought to my attention as a complaint when I first came uh, aboard, or actually in my campaign it brought to my attention that Ohio County continues to fund our Sheriff's Department at the highest level per capita of any county in the state of Kentucky. And uh, we're, we're proud of that. And uh, we also see that the uh, department has what they need, what the Sheriff asks for in the way of uh, cars or equipment or anything like that. And Sheriff Thompson in exchange provides the highest level of peace and safety for our county that's possible. And thanks to our jailer, 
Um, he has kept our jail open, one of only three life safety jails in the state, and a whole lot bigger than any of the rest of them. And uh, in the last year, he's had more people with serious charges, uh, murder, for example, many that more people was charged with murder in our care at the jail than ever in the history of, of the jail, in the, in the history of the county. And you've noticed I wanted you to listen to things where we spent money on, you know, a lot of dollars added up there, and the punchline to that is we've lowered the county's debt by about a quarter of a million dollars in that time of doing all those things. Awesome. So we're real proud of that. We have big plans. We have big plans for 2013. Uh, we want to start the Bluegrass Museum in Rosine. We want to open the golf course here in the spring. Uh, that's a very ambitious challenge, but we we think we can do it. We plan to have one open. We're going to finish this bridge repair list of the 74 that was talked about and bring it to zero. We want to pave even more miles of roads in our counties than we did in the past year. We want to begin work on the Rochester Dam, which is going to have to be totally renovated for us to continue to have the use of it for our water for the county. We want to get that done. We want to increase the activities right here in this building and in the uh, parks as well and the plans in place to do that. We're going to complete the bathrooms in the courthouse and secure the sheriff's offices. And that should probably have been at the top of the list because that's probably going to be the first one of these things we realize is actually going to be done in a, in a short time. Uh, we want to begin the firehouse at the industrial park and add many more fire hydrants to our county. And we want to begin our process of becoming a work-ready community, which is very important to this county in recruiting that big industry that we've been after for years and years. Uh, and uh, ever so often we really have a name to put with that big industry and we work for it. And these two things I mentioned last is, is necessities to recruit that, uh, that big one. And that is that we've got to have uh, the fire uh, protection in the industrial park and we've got to be a work ready community. And that's where we're working with the school board uh, or school superintendent specifically who has been through this process before in Hancock County and uh, uh, it'll be about a two-year process so we want to get that done so we'll be have everything in line to uh, to recruit that big one we're talking about so that uh, we know that coal is cyclical and we've got uh, uh, this may be our last ride on that and hopefully it'll last several years but by the time that's done, we hope that we're ready with the big industry so keep people working here uh, like they do now. Uh, right now, uh, just a, a side note, we found out that almost identical amount of people leave Ohio County to go to work every day that come into Ohio County to go to work every day. So we're, we're at a balance there. Whereas, for example, in McLean County, 90% of everyone who lives there works out of the county and no one comes in to work in the county. So they just compare us to one of our neighbors. So uh, appreciate your attention, and, uh, and like I said, we keep on planning on big things for Ohio County, and we're proud of our community, and uh, we're gonna just, just keep going. If I've got it just a minute, I'll be glad to take questions. Must have covered it pretty good. Thanks, everybody.